Business Matters starts now. Hey, good evening, Business Matters. This is a phenomenal, incredible midterm election, so important. And tonight we have a really key candidate for the United States Senate, Carla Sands. Carla, thank you so much for being with us. Tony, thanks for having me with you and hello to all of your viewers. I wanted to ask you this. I look at your numbers and your numbers are looking pretty good. This is an incredibly interesting race for the Republican primary. Uh, your thoughts on where you stand? Are you surprised? Did you, wanna, did you want your numbers? Of course, everyone wants your numbers to be higher, but you're looking good. Your thoughts on where you are? So I'm really happy about where we are. We have three of us in double digits, two guys uh, who are more moderate. You could call them Republicans, maybe a different kind of Republican. I, my lane is really, really clear. If you want to elect a conservative uh, Republican uh, to the Senate, I'm your candidate. I'm a pro-life, pro-First Amendment, pro-Second Amendment, constitutional conservative, but also America first, businesswoman, and mom and Christian. And that's what colors my judgment. And that is definitely uh, the foundation uh, for my life and, and how I will, I will say how I will lead in the Senate yeah, you've had an interesting career. You've been, been an, an actress. You've uh, run a business, uh, two kinds of businesses. You've really had an interesting road here. Uh, with all that success, why politics? Well, you know, it was while I was serving you and all of your viewers as the U.S. ambassador to Denmark, Greenland, and the Faroe Islands, working to secure our country against our adversaries like Russia and China, and also working to create a more level playing field for our, our trading, uh, for our producers and our manufacturers. That um, And we increased our U.S. exports over 43% while I was at Post. And we also uh, were successful securing the high north uh, and the United States against our adversaries like Russia and China. And I worked with NATO and the Department of Defense to get that done. And I was actually awarded the highest civilian honor for that work. Uh, from the DOD. But while I was serving, I was watching what was happening here at home and I saw the rioting and looting from coast to coast in 2020 that was largely unchecked. I watched the incoming Biden administration talking about how they were planning to ban fracking and open our southern border. And then we saw so many conservative voices canceled on social media, including it was the current sitting president and I was I had worked so hard to raise money for congressmen, senators, governors and presidents to get them elected Republicans. And it seemed like we were losing our country faster and faster to the hard left. And many Republicans seem to be weak and not holding the line to protect our constitutional rights and our liberty. And I thought, well, what I'm doing is not working. I better do something different. And so I thought, well, I'll never back down. I will never, I will always be on the offense because I love my country and I have a 21 year old daughter and I want her to have the same opportunities in life, the liberty, the freedom of speech and the rule of law honored that I grew up having. I mean, when I went to school, nobody silenced my voice. Teachers didn't indoctrinate me. That is happening to every single kid in America right now. And so that's why I'm running, Tony. So uh, we want to get back. I want to get talk about your doctor. So your thoughts right now, uh, before we go to commercial, I wanted to ask you this. Were you hoping uh, in this mix, having had that relationship with the former president, to have his endorsement? Is that something you're seeking? Do you wish he would have jumped in? Is that an asset or a liability? Well, every single candidate in this race would love to have President Trump's endorsement. I'd be honored to receive his endorsement, but I never get ahead of President Trump. What I will say is that I'm seeking the support of every single Pennsylvanian who when they fill up their tank at the gas station and they see that high price and they wanna pay less, I'm gonna be Pennsylvania's energy senator and I'm gonna bring those prices down for you. I'm gonna give you relief, not just at the pump, but when those energy prices come down, the price of everything is gonna come down, groceries, everything, because the cost of energy affects the cost of everything. And I want to be Pennsylvania's energy senator. And as a matter of fact, Tony, I am calling for Operation Warp Speed to regain our American energy dominance. I worked on these energy issues while I was posted working for you in Europe. I worked selling American gas. I want to do it for Pennsylvania. It will help our country be secure and we can sell the extra to our friends and allies so they don't need to buy 
blood, oil, and gas from countries like Russia, Venezuela, and Iran. All right, we will have more and more information, more questions for Carla Stan. Stay with us, Business Matters. Be right back. You're watching Business Matters, because if it's business, it matters. Want to enjoy the show on the go? Subscribe to our podcast. Go to www.wfmz.com slash business matters for more information. Now, back to Tony Ionelli. Hey, we are back with candidate, Republican candidate for U.S. Senate. Carla, I want to ask you a question. In your time that you spent in Denmark and seeing the world in a broader view, what would you have done? What could we, your thoughts on Ukraine? Could we have done? Did we get in this late? What would you do? What would you like to see done differently? Well, first of all, we're in a pickle, right? We have weak leadership from the White House, and Putin saw our, with our chaotic and disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan and realized that uh, Joe Biden and his administration were inept. And we also know that there's Hunter Biden and the Biden family corruption that's in Russia, it's with China, it's with Ukraine and other countries. And this has come to light over the last year. So are, do we have an, an honest leader in the White House that we can trust to put the American people's needs and security first? It looks like we don't from the facts that are in evidence. And that is terrible for the United States. But we also know that Putin saw the weakness, the leading from behind, if you will, from Joe Biden and his administration. And so he amassed those troops after the disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal. He had amassed his troops there on the Ukraine border. I worked on those issues. We saw Joe Biden okay Putin's Russian gas pipeline that runs from Russia to Germany. And he killed, as you know, the Keystone XL pipeline on day one in his right. administration. His administration's at war with Pennsylvania and American energy and also Pennsylvania and American farmers because of the Green New Deal regulations. There's so many pieces to this. My team and I blocked that Russian gas pipeline. The only place it wasn't complete was in Danish waters. And then I had the threat of sanctions. And so we were able to right. delay Nord Stream 2 pipeline, that Russian gas pipeline the entire time mm -hmm. I was working for you as the US ambassador. And we know that Putin would not have gone in without the Russian gas pipeline approved. And then Joe Biden saying, well, if it's a little incursion into your, uh, Ukraine, hmm, one or two, we're not gonna do anything about it. He literally said that from the podium. That's all Putin needed. Gotcha. That and the comp compromised president means we, we have a Russia that's empowered and China is working with them. Yeah. Uh, it's very concerning that this they have teamed up. It, they've been doing military exercises for at least two years mm -hmm. together. And so we you know, I also, Tony, go ahead. So I'm sorry, so we relate to the game from your perspective. Uh, Scott, I wanna ask you this. So if you're in fact- well, Tony, the, if I just could, go ahead. they would never, Putin would never have gone into Ukraine if President Trump were in office. He Out would of, never have felt empowered to do that. We know that she would be behaving regarding Taiwan instead of saber rattling that he's going to invade Taiwan and unify an independent country with mm -hmm. China. Mm -hmm. This would never have happened. And when, when you say that, Carl, interested. I'm sorry, when you say yeah. that, Carl, I want to just draw a picture for the viewers. Why, what would have been different? Uh, the they fear of, of the former president that they don't have? Is that, is that your point? You know what it's called? It's called Ronald Reagan's peace through strength. President Trump used peace through strength. He went to our NATO allies, which Barack Obama did too in 2014, and said, you need to pay your 2% that you committed to paying for your shared defense. Mm -hmm. Because Article 3, they defend themselves, comes before Article 5, we defend each other. And these are rich European countries with free college and free health care, and they'd like a free ride on the American taxpayers who are already paying around 3.5% of our GDP toward our security, but also our allies' security. So it was a bad deal. President Trump got almost $400 billion committed by our NATO allies. I got Denmark to to go from 1.17 to 1.5% of their GDP while I was at post because there were no missiles in their silos. So I was able to sell them American made missiles. That's to the good of their defense and our interoperability. But if your viewers are interested, I have a website, carlasands.com, and they can go and view it. I'm running for the US Senate because I'll always put Pennsylvania first and I'll always put America first. 
And that hasn't always happened here in Pennsylvania and in the United States. And that's why we're in such a bad situation internationally, but also domestically, which is really what I'm focused on. Carl, I want to ask you a question. If you, in fact, are sure. the nominee, uh, your thoughts on the fact that there's maybe 15, 16 percent of people that are kind of on the fence. I was just at a meeting talking about this week. Do you feel you're obviously a very conservative and that's, that's your platform uh, and you're popular within your party, but do you have to move anywhere to be uh, a candidate elected in the general election? In other words, do you have to prove that you can represent a broader constituency or not necessarily? Tony, I have worked to help get elected every Republican candidate for president since I've been an adult because I know Republicans are the party of strong families, love of constitution, mm -hmm. love of small business, and also we're the party of love, right? We, we love our constitution, our country, and our families. We're the inclusive party. We don't censor like the left does. The Democrat party has changed so much that it's now the party of Marxists, of AOC and Bernie Sanders. It's not the party of JFK anymore. I believe that Pennsylvanians love America first policies. They want to pay 220, 240 a gallon for gas or less as we increase our harvest of Pennsylvania and American energy. They also, they want the prices in the grocery store and for goods to go down. It will, we will bring it down and I will stop the outrageous spending in Washington. These big bad multi-trillion dollar bills are really what's stoking inflation. And then President Biden and his his administration's war on our energy is throwing kerosene on that fire and stoking it. I want to be Pennsylvania's energy senator and I want to represent them and bring back common sense regulations. Carla Sands, we thank you so much for being with us on Business Matters. The best of luck. We will be right back with another key candidate in this important primary race. You're watching Business Matters because if it's business, it matters.